and well, welcome back everybody. Today's video is long overdue. Over 100 videos ago we did a video on action photography only we didn't do action in kind of real life because it was the middle of lockdown so I was going to say you guys have been pestering me I don't mean it like that um, but you've been reminding me basically that we need to do this and therefore here we are. Today is the day. So we have just pulled up at the location. Usually we get into a good position before we start filming. And I just kind of want to run through the difference with this video versus the last video before we go ahead and walk. So the last video that we did, we were sat in the office at home, right? And sitting at home in the office is absolutely fine, but there's no practical element of that. However, the theory in that video is still true and correct. And I know loads of people say, well, I don't do it like that. I've not been taught like that. That's fine. This method has worked for tens of thousands of people legitimately and therefore I'm confident in it and its ability to be taught out and that's why we do it. So that being said we are going to be covering the situation in practicality and that's why I'm going to be bringing and using with us today the screen. Everybody always drops comments in what is the screen? Well guys the screen literally just records my settings in the camera that's all it does. Don't use it unless we're recording. So we're going to go head out and utilize the knowledge that we learned in the theory section. If you have not watched that first video, it is worth a watch. I know I'm saying that as me, but I think it is worth a watch. So go ahead and watch that. We will link it above. Eh. Oh, dear me. So We've got Bright with us. We're going to go and head in to one of my favourite woodland locations to find a track that we can use for action photography. We are going to be in a woodland. This is easier to do, a lot easier to do, outside in a kind of an open space. So just remember that. We are going to be using a Sony a7R 3 today and we're going to be using the uh, Sony GM135 1.8 lens because it is super fast. I've already discussed this lens before. I will link uh, to that video above as well. All of the links to everything that I've got here will be in the description below. Um, but yeah, we're gonna be using this kit. It doesn't matter what camera you have, but as the previous video on this topic has already said, you will get a higher hit rate the more expensive slash professional your camera is. However, even if you've got the best camera body in the world, your hit rate is very, very rarely gonna be 100% of all shots taken. So just bear that in mind. I'm not gonna go through the merits of individual cameras. But we are gonna go find the location and then go and set up. Good. Do, 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 do. Okay, so we're at a really good track to use just to sort of kind of like get the ball rolling. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna set up our cameras and take our first shots. Now this track and this whole woodland in the UK in general is absolutely soaking wet at the moment. So it's quite muddy and there is a muddy patch kind of halfway through, which isn't ideal, but we're gonna see if we can work with it either shooting that way or that way. We'll get to that in a second. The first thing we need to do is set up our cameras for shooting action. So just going to drop some weight that I put on in lockdown. <laughs> we need to make sure that we're on autofocus on the lens and make sure that we're basically using our lenses properly. You can do this with any lens, but the best lenses tend to be fast lenses and sport lenses. So 70 to 200 is usually your best bet. Um, in this instance, this is actually slightly faster than the Sony GM 70 to 200. So we can use that instead. Okay, so you guys should be able to see this screen now. So let me just go ahead and focus on something off into the distance so you can see what I can see. We've got some pretty basic settings up on the screen at the moment. What we're working with is 1 250th of a second, f2.8 and ISO 500. I need to make sure that I've got a action shutter speed. So I'm looking at personally anything over 1 1250th of a second with my dogs, sometimes more than that. So in this instance, I'm going to put that up to 1250th of a second and looking at our histogram we can see that we are underexposed. I shoot in full manual, I shoot in full manual all of the time because I get more control. 
So what I'm going to do is just to make sure that we've got some more light coming in. So I could either drop my F number, which is a viable option on this lens because it goes to 1.8. I'm going to leave it at 2.8 at the moment because most, most of you guys will have a 2.8 lens. Um, and I'm going to go for ISO 1000 maybe. 1000 is good. 1000 will be fine with a black dog coming through there. And what we can try and do is utilise the lighter areas of the track if that makes sense. That's really just the tip of the iceberg. What we need to do is go through all of our other settings. All of them are detailed in that previous video, but I'm just gonna make sure that we are all there and ready to go. So AFC, yes. So our drive mode wants to be on high or high plus. So it's like um, a burst mode. We take multiple shots in quick succession. And then what we also want to make sure basically is that we personally, I use single point focus, usually on small or medium for action. Um, and that is across every single camera make and model. So again, you might do it a different way. That's fine. This is just the way that works best for us. So then what we want to do is if you've got eye autofocus, you want to make sure that that is on and that it's set to animal eye autofocus. Then you want to make sure that your tracking sensitivity is super high unless you are bad at aiming, in which case go for probably a standard or uh, four on that kind of a scale. So yours might be different, just work with it, okay? You also want to make sure if your lens uses image stabilization, if you're shooting action, you want image stabilization off not on because the camera will see the movement in it and try to correct it we don't want that we want the movement to be captured as we're capturing it i hope that makes sense just keep it off image stabilization for when we're shooting so uh, with all of our settings all set up it is time now to introduce a dog and god it's been a long time since i've done this so we'll see how it goes uh, are you, are, are we just walk? We're, yep, okay. Okay, so we're going to basically uh, position ourselves so we're going to get catch her in action on the ridgy bit. Now, you guys might not be able to see the ridgy bit, but it's underneath the tree that's kind of leaning over the top. I'll put a pin on that. Um, so, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to be on the floor somewhere around this general vicinity. We'll just do some flat running ones first and then maybe we'll introduce some form of a branch because Bright is old enough to go over small objects and therefore we can do the light jumping in the air one if we want to. I want to make sure that I've got her a reasonable size. Actually, I'm probably a little bit far, too far away at this stage, but the exposure is looking great. I mean, she's so freaking cute. For action shots, you're best off using your center points because they're usually fast on DSLRs. Uh, on mirrorless cameras, it doesn't really matter, but uh, whatever your personal preference is, is fine. Um, so I'll shuffle forward so I'm at the tree. I know, Beady! So, as always, we'll be lying straight on the floor. So we've got this amazing angle. Beanie's there looking all glorious is make sure that we can move our focus point around nice and easily. I want Dan to go ahead and put her in a certain way, walk past me and then recall her. So you can see that Beanie's gonna come running up to this mound, this peak that we've got here. And uh, when she's coming over, we'll get our best chance. So what I'm gonna do is get my focus point lined up, hold down my earphone and wait. I'm using back button focus, but it doesn't matter. And I'm gonna track her. Okay. Get, get loud. Wow. That was really bad from me. Okay, so I'm going to try and do a much better job of tracking her here. That was not good for me. She's a little bit low on that ridge. So keep your arms and wrists nice and loose. Nice and loose, nice and loose. When you're ready, Dan. Okay. Okay, so do you see how I'm like, I'm moving myself to track her. I'm not letting the camera make that decision. It's gonna have a really quick look. Remember what I said about hit rates? <laughs> so she could do with running a little bit straighter, if we're being honest. And that's our shot. Perfect. Go on. Okay. Wow. Good girl. Yeah, wow. So I'm only releasing two or three shots a time and I'm making those shots really count. That's another one. Perfect. Let's go and look at a different location and try something different. Oh, doing me. I'm getting old. 
Okay, so basically I've been left in charge of the camera, which is just not safe or appropriate. So we've literally just moved here from there. And what we're going to do is Dan's going to hold Beanie as though she's a client dog that cannot be doing weights and stuff. So he's going to hold her about there, really, to be honest, where she is. So they're there, but we've got that log. Dan is going to hold the dog. When I say go, he lets her go. I make loads of noise and she runs directly to me. Beanie's gonna pop over the top of this log. Now, I need to be ready for that, so I'm gonna, I would lift up slightly just so I can grab the focus. Now, as soon as Dan lets Bright go, Dan's gonna dive. Probably that way. I've got a squeaky ball in my hand, which she now knows I have. Jessica needs to do better here. Ready? Let's see what we're working with here. That's looking a good old beanie. So I just flicked through those. Beanie's done for the day. She's done a super job. If you do that, you'll get a sharp action photo and everything will be fine. So the main thing to remember about action photography really is that it is next to impossible to get a 100% hit rate. Those of us who do often have super expensive cameras. Main thing is to practice. Just keep practicing. You can never practice too much at something like this. I'm very rusty. The last time I did action, I mean, damn, when was the last time I did action photography? But this is a skill that everybody should know because it's all about the theory. And as soon as you learn theory, you can apply it to anything that you need to within the field of photography. So with all said and done, hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please do let me know. Drop down some comments below. Make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you all again really, really soon.